Welcome to my channel, Angela's Kitchen Garden, where I grow my own organic fruit, vegetables and cut flowers. It's now the last week in June and my allotment has really come along. It's currently raining at the moment, um, but I'm so pleased to see this rain because it's been so dry and the ground could really do with a good drenching. So I'm going to take you on a plot tour now. It's been about a month since my last plot tour. I'll start down at the bottom. Here is my little mini greenhouse that I used to start my seedlings off. Unfortunately, the zip at the top broke and so I've cut the door off it and I'm just going to use it as somewhere that I can grow my cucumbers. I might get a new cover for it for the winter this year, but I have to see because the frame's not holding up that well. It's about five years, six years old now, so it's done really well. And in here I've got two varieties of cucumbers and this little mini greenhouse is going to just keep the rain off the leaves of these because they don't really like it when they get very wet and they've only just been moved into here and if you have a look at the new growth it's doing a lot better although this one at the front is a little bit wet but it is keeping most of the moisture off them so here i've got four of this variety called cucino and these are little sort of snacking cucumbers and they're just a really nice pack lunch size and my son really enjoys these and then I've got four of these and they're quite prolific. They sort of produce lots of cucumbers on them. And if you have a look at the one at the back, that one's got one that's getting ready to be picked. Uh, they're sort of around, they're ready around that sort of size. So as you can see, that one's got three. That one's just starting out and those two, which are a little bit further along. And then it has them going up. So every leaf join, you get a cucumber. And then at the end here, I've got a variety called Market Moor. And this one is very, very early on, but it will, it will beef up. But this is bigger than the little snacking cucumbers. And these are really good and they're quite hardy as well. I grow those most years, but this is the first time I've tried these ones and I'm going to grow them again next year because they're really good. Now, moving along, these are my poppies and it's a shame it's raining because these are absolutely spectacular. I didn't actually plant these, these self-seeded and I'll put in a clip now and this is the plot where I think that these ones have come from and as you can see the bees absolutely love them and so what I'll do this year is I will, if you have a look here back on my plot with this one, at the seed heads here what I will do is I will keep these and then next year I will use these and I will sow them so that I have lots of nice poppies and as you can see there are lots of new buds that are going to come and so it's quite a prolific poppy I've got this one I've got one down here and I've got one that's just in there so I've got three of them I have um actually uh, composted quite a lot of these because I wasn't sure what type of poppy they were but they're really pretty so I like those. Here I've got a little sort of mixed bed so I have got some anti-rhinums. I think these are the Madame Butterfly mix. They're either that or they're Chantilly but I'm pretty sure that they're the Madame Butterfly ones. I've got some lilies and as you can see I've got a few flower heads on them. These were in since last year and not all of them came up. There was a two whole rows of these but only a couple of them have come up and with everything that's been going on I wasn't able to um, buy replacement bulbs to put in but next year I'll sort that out. Here I've got my gladioli they're doing really really well then I have got my peonies now with these I'm actually at the end of the year in the autumn I will dig these up and I will space them out nicely and it will mean that they will be much bigger and they'll just have space to grow. Then I've got my wildlife area where I've got some flowers for the bees. And then along here, I have got my dahlia bed and these are doing really well. I've pinched them out. I've got a video um, that I posted a couple of years ago about pinching out the dahlias. And so they've, um, it just means that you don't get massive sort of tree trunk stems. You get lots more flowers and they're much more usable as a cut flower. But even if you're not going to cut them, it just means you get more blooms, which is really nice. I've got some Cosmos that I've planted. They're Cosmos um, double click and they're just a mix of colours. Here's just a self-seeded wild poppy, which is looking a bit sorry for itself in the rain. But when it's sunny, they're open and the bees love that as well. And then I have got a couple of lupins there 
and that massive plant there that is my rhubarb which is doing really really well so I'll take you around to the front and show you what I've got growing there so here I've got my apple tree that's in a pot and I need to sort out a better stake for it because it keeps falling over um, but here are my apples what you get a little bit early sort of around the beginning of June you get what's called apple drop and this is where the tree decides that it doesn't get enough water to sustain more apples and it will drop all the ones that it thinks are too many and so you then just get a nice distribution of apples along the stems which the tree can then bring on to maturity and then here I have got my carnations that I took as cuttings from my partner's bouquet that he bought me and they're doing really well and I'll take some more cuttings from these later on and then it will just mean that I have more plants because they're nice and bushy and if you have a look you can see they've got lots of flower heads that are coming along now so they'll be in flower soon here I have got two trays of some asparagus and I grew these from seed and this year I'm going to grow them on, make them nice and big and then in the autumn I will plant them out. I'll decide where I'm going to put a bed of them and then I will have sort of in the next four or five years I'll have nice asparagus that I can start picking. Then here are my irises, they've gone over now and then behind them I have got lettuces that I put in amongst my new strawberry plants that I took. These are runners from last year. And then moving along, this is my grapevine, which is doing really, really well. There we go. If you have a look, I've got some grapes here, which I'm really excited about. So hopefully at the end of the year, I'll have lots of nice grapes. And this is doing really well. I need to figure out where I'm going to put this because it needs something to start growing up. And then if I spin round here, I have got a pot and I have just taken out my new potatoes from this potato bag and I have put in some sweet potatoes and so I have to see how they get on this year you can eat the leaves as you would sort of spinach and you can also then in the autumn dig up the tubers before the first frost so I have to see how they do they're just from a supermarket bought sweet potato that I dug into some soil and then took the slips from that sweet potato and so they're not a specific variety that's meant to be grown in this country but they were organic potatoes and hopefully they will grow then moving along i have got my mulberry bush i love this i bought this from the garden center and i'm really excited because when i was younger i used to go to the local park and they had a massive mulberry tree and we used to pick mulberries from it and so it's quite nostalgic for me so i'm really excited to see how this gets on obviously it's not going to be massive because this is a bush rather than a tree but I hopefully will get lots of nice mulberries from that. Then I've just got some pots with some cuttings that I've taken and a little pot of some cut and come again salad at the front and then I've got the rest of my strawberries. I need to move this cage um, sort of that way because a lot of these are now in flower and so I just need to net them so that the pigeons don't get them. And then moving along in here I have got my parsnips which need a bit of thinning I have got my carrots that had sort of a bit of a haphazard germination but yesterday because I knew there was going to be a couple of days of rain I put in some new carrot seeds and hopefully these will then germinate so I'll have a nice full row and I'll be able to just pick them at various stages then I've got my cornflowers and these are absolutely gorgeous I love cornflowers they're so pretty and the bees really really like them as well and then behind those I have got my broad beans now these have done absolutely fantastically this year and if you have a look at the tops I haven't pinched them at the top they're all growing and this one's almost as tall as me it's massive they're sort of really really big really lush and they've got lots of nice broad beans on them that are coming along and I think the reason that this has done so well because I've always had to pinch my broad beans out because I normally get black fly and I think the reason for this is because if you have a look over there I've got a massive patch of nettles in the wildlife area because mine's the last plot 
and so that's just sort of a spare area that's meant to be for the wildlife and I think that because you get lots of ladybirds on the stinging nettles I think that they've then just kept the black fly under control for me which has been really handy so I'm really pleased about that and I will make sure that when I plant my broad beans I make sure that because at various patches along here there's varying degrees of nettles but I'll make sure that I plant them near where a patch of nettles is in the wildlife area and then moving along I have got my sugar snap peas and if you have a look these are absolutely laden with them they're just everywhere so I've been picking lots of these for dinner every night. Um, you pick them when they're a bit bigger than this, sort of nice and chunky, and they're really, really delicious. And then here I have got my Hearst Green Shaft peas, and they've done really well. If you have a look, they're nice and chunky. And so the same here, I've got millions of them. Well, not millions, but I've got a good, a good supply of them. And so we're actually able to take some home and freeze them because we've got so many, which is really nice. Here, I have got a row of my Sweet Williams and they have done spectacularly this year. I can't keep up with the picking because there are just so many of them. So next year, I'm not going to, well, this year, I'm not going to plant three rows of them. I'm going to plant one row, maybe two at the most. I don't need three rows of these. If I take you along to the end, I have got another patch of dahlias. Now these ones I grew from seed and the same again, I've pinched out the tops of them. And if you have a look, these ones are starting to get buds on them, which is really exciting. So I'll be able to see what colors they are. And then the ones with colors that I like, I will keep. And the ones that I decide that I don't like, I will pot them up and I'll give them away as gifts. And then I have got my Cosmos. These ones are a little bit further along than the ones that I planted down the front. And with these, same again, I've pinched them out. So if you have a look here, I've pinched out the growing tip and then it's sent up shoots from the bottom. So you get a nice bushy plant, which is much better. So if you see, same again on this one here, it's nice and bushy because I've pinched it out. And so you're getting lots and lots of nice long stems if you pinch them. And then spinning around, here is my cage with red cabbages in them. And I don't know if you can see them that well through the netting, but these have done really, really well, especially in this weather. They've come along really nicely. And then here I have got some Jerusalem artichokes. At the end of the year what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig these up and I'm going to put them in a pot so that they don't go crazy and start growing everywhere. Then here I have got my lavenders and they're so pretty with their sort of nice little blue flowers and I will be picking those and using them. I'm not going to do that this year but next year once they get a bit bigger I'll pick them and start sort of using them in the house and things. And then if I walk around this side I have got some sunflowers here and these are a branching variety so I do need to deadhead this one actually I need to take this one out and they send up new branches and these are just here because they're so cheery they're really really pretty I need to sort of tame the wildlife area a little bit because it's come on to my plot now so I need to cut the grass back and then here I've got a rose bush this is a nice white rose sort of has pink tips to the bloom and then it opens out so that's done quite well and then down here I have got calendula and I'll be picking this and using this as well and then I have got some more anti-rhinums along here and then along there I've got some and these ones actually self-seeded and so I just dug them up and put them in I do need to have a little bit of a weed because it's been wet so that they're growing now and then in front of the antirhinums, I've got a plant called Cerinth. And this, if you have a look on this one actually, just starting, you get these very, very pretty little purple bells. So you get more of them along the stem. And the stems are really good in flower arranging. You can use them sort of as a filler. They've also got little flowers on them. So they grow up and then sort of bend over. 
and so really really nice in flower arrangements and with some of my antirhinums they are starting to sort of actually if I show you this one over here starting to produce flower heads on them and the same again I pinch these out down the bottom and it's meant that they've become nice little bushy plants and because I've got them at various different stages it means that I'll have a nice succession of flowers throughout the year and if I spin you around again moving up I've got my herb section here so I've got sorrel and I really like sorrel I did have a whole row of it and I decided that that was far too much so I've dug it up and I've just got a few of them now and I planted them there then I have got some sage some thyme some marjoram this I thought was chamomile but it's not it's actually fever for you and so this is good uh, to so you pick off the flowers pick off the flower head I'd pick a nice dry day to do it rather than a wet one and you pick them off take them home dry them I put them on kitchen towel and then um, just dry them for one to two weeks and then you can jar them up and you can make tea with this and it's supposed to be quite good for migraines to sort of help prevent them so that's fever for you this is my flat leaf parsley and this sorry it's my curly parsley and this needs to be cut right back because as you can see it's gone to flower but because the bees really like the flowers on these I might actually leave this I cut back my flat leaf parsley so that's now going to start growing again I've then got some garlic chives some regular chives and then a row of red onions these haven't done that well actually I'm going to have to dig them up because they've sent up their flower spike now so I'll see what they look like then I've got some more strawberry plants I've got beetroot and these are multi-sown so in each little clump there's five beetroots and so you pull out the largest one of the clump and then you leave the others in so that they can develop and that way you have a nice succession of beetroot and in between them I have got my chantilly and um, antirhinums and now these ones aren't those big frilly double blooms like the madame butterfly these are nice single ones that open but they point upwards and so they're really really nice and I've got pink and dark pink and then I've got another rhubarb plant behind that just tucked in there I have got my a gooseberry plant and the birds ate all the gooseberries off that and then I have got a nice comfrey plant and this is really good I love comfrey because what I do is I keep chopping it down so I've already chopped that down once and I'll do it again once it gets a bit bigger and you it's absolutely fantastic for making plant food so you put it in cut the leaves off put them in a bucket with some water put a brick on top so that the leaves stay under the water leave it for about a month and you can leave it for longer if you like and then you can use it as a plant feed and you dil dilute it one part of the comfrey with 10 parts water or what you can do is you can just chop off the leaves put it in your compost bin and I also use it on my runner beans I chop it off and I put it in between my row of runner beans and it works as a really nice mulch and fertilizer for them so moving up I have got my berry section here I have got some autumn fruiting raspberries some summer fruiting raspberries and then some autumn fruiting raspberries again and these have done really well they're growing these were only put in last year so I'm not expecting spectacular harvest but they've really come on they're really quite bushy so I'm pleased with those and then at the end I have got my current bushes I've got red currants white currants and black currants but the pigeons have absolutely annihilated them and so actually if I walk along I'll show you if you have a look we've got such heavy wood pigeons that they've been breaking the branches that they've landed on them so I haven't had a good harvest from these this year but what I will do is next year I'm going to build a proper cage to go around them just to keep the birds off them and then I'll get a nice harvest of those and walking through here I have got some another gooseberry plant here it's a red variety and then I have planted out my globe artichokes that one I'm not sure whether it's going to survive but this rain is definitely going to help it I think it struggled a little bit when I planted it out and then here I've got a plant called a wine berry and these have nice little red berries they're quite a tart sort of raspberry sort of 
that's how I'd describe it. Then I have got a Tabery and I've got a Thornless Blackberry that I got from DT Brown this year. And this is covered in fruit. I do need to net this as well. I need to learn my lesson and, and get it netted before they start looking tasty so that the pigeons don't eat it. But if you can see, it's just covered in them. It's only a tiny little plant. So this is called um, Blackberry Loch Ness. So I'm really pleased with that. Then I have got my Swiss chard, which I've been picking. But this one, because of all the heat, it's bolted. But that's fine. What I'll do is I will dig this one out. Well, I'll use the leaves for eating. And then I'll dig it up and then I'll plant some more because it's still early enough in the season to get another one in there. I've got some marigolds. I've got some calendula. And then I've got my tomato plants. And these have started sending up their flower spikes. So that's really really exciting so it won't be long till I get tomatoes if you see I planted these quite um, a distance apart because I always plant them with a massive distance in between them because I'm worried about blight especially when it rains in weather like this but somebody asked me about it in one of my videos and I thought do I really need to plant them that far apart so what I've done is further up the plot sort of down the end I'll show you I planted them closer together and I'm going to see whether it makes a difference having them this far apart or whether it's it's not necessary so if you watch my videos through the season you'll see whether these tomato plants do better than the ones that are planted closer together and then here I've got a row all the way along and these are just some dwarf um, green beans if you have a look They've got flowers on them, so it won't be long till I get nice green beans off these. They're really prolific. I really like dwarf green beans. So moving along into my brassica cage here, I have got some tender stem broccoli here. And this one will produce a crop towards the end of this year. Then I have got my brew kale or kalets, as they're called. I've got a row of these and these produce what's it's like a brussels sprout but it's more open it's more flowery looking they look like miniature red cabbages and they taste more like kale so they're really nice but it's really handy because you get a crop during the winter months when you don't have many things that you can harvest then i have got a row of cauliflower this got annihilated by the black fly i think because of the netting i didn't get many ladybugs in here so what i had to do was i had to go to my sort of nettle patches and pick off the ladybirds and pick off the little sort of ladybird larvae. I brought them in and they seem to have sorted it out for me, which is really nice. Then I have got another row of tender stem broccoli. So I've bought varieties that harvest at slightly different times. So hopefully I'll get a nice sort of succession from late summer all the way through to sort of early summer next year. And then here, I have got three rows of Brussels sprouts and these will, they're like the Kalets, they harvest in the winter months which is really good and hopefully I'll be eating some at Christmas time. Then I have got two rows of Cavaro Nero kale and I absolutely love this stuff, it's the long green stems, really really tasty. Then here I've got some kohlrabi, now this is a bit of a disaster area. I've got my garlics and my onions, and these weren't planted here originally. These were planted there where my tomatoes are, and I decided to dig them up. I thought, oh, it'll be all right. But no, it's not all right. They don't like being moved. So I've now learnt my lesson, and I won't be digging up onions and garlic again. I will leave them in situ once they're planted and then harvest them. So moving along, I haven't been watering my potatoes because I'm harvesting them now so they're sort of dying back. I have got a fig tree here. I have got my leeks and these are desperate to go in actually. They really need planting out. I'm going to, within the next couple of weeks, I've finished harvesting my broad beans and then I will put these in down the bottom of the plot where my broad beans are. And then here this was a very weedy area that had raspberries and loads of ground elder, which you can see keeps coming up and I keep having to weed it. And I've got my squash bed here. So I've got lots of different varieties of squash. Here, 
I have got a what's this one a gem squash so this one was given to me by one of my plot neighbours and she's sort of a couple of plots down to try I've never grown a, a gem squash before so I'll be interested to see how that one does I'm growing quite a few new varieties this year and then here I have got my pumpkins and these ones I kept the seeds from my pumpkin last year so it was a really good variety so hopefully it'll be good again this year and then here I've got some pots with um, blueberries in so they're doing quite well I've got a couple of pots of these along here and I've got another one there and then moving further along I have got another row and this one is a baked potato squash I'm excited to see what this looks like and tastes like so apparently you harvest them and you eat them very much like a baked potato I've never tried those before so I'm excited about those and then I have got my potty marron squash here in a row and then moving down I have got my Avalon squash here I've got a regular courgette I've been harvesting these but they're as you can see sending up new courgettes it doesn't take long and they come along nicely so that's sort of quite a substantial plant and you can also harvest the flowers and you can stuff them you can either put sort of soft cheese or rice or whatever you'd like in there they're quite nice so that's another thing then I've got my sweet corn this is doing well now I did drop the tray and I broke quite a lot of them so I would have had a larger area I would have been able to fill it but unfortunately because I dropped the tray quite a lot of them got damaged but I tried one of planting one of them that was completely snapped so it was sort of when it was much smaller it was snapped around here and you can see where it was snapped because the leaves are sort of broken off and it just grew up through it so if I ever drop them again fingers crossed I don't I um, will actually give them a chance because they do seem to sort of bounce back quite well and then here I have got my runner beans and I'm quite pleased I'll show you this structure actually have a look I built this out of trees that we sort of chopped down from that area because they were casting too much shade over the plot and I think it's really good normally I'd sort of use bamboo canes but this year because I wasn't able to get any I made this structure and then put string down so each one of these was planted with the string underneath its root ball so that it can grow up so I have to see how they do but I'm really pleased with it so far it's working nicely and if you see the runner beans are really getting going they've got up quite a sort of a way along these they're doing really well they're sort of really shooting up and then uh, next I've got a section of blotty beans and then I've got another section of green beans and the blotty beans are really light because I dry them and then it means that I can eat them through the winter and then over here I've just got a little selection of zinnias giant zinnias and then I've got a little area here that I need to plant up haven't planted that up yet and then that's another comfrey and I've put a row I chopped it down and I put all the stems and the leaves in between the two rows just so that they can add an extra layer of nutrients to the soil and then if I go up this is my second section of tomatoes so they're not planted very close together but they are closer than I would normally plant them so they've only sort of got about two foot between each row and I've got some more calendula in between them that's just to sort of attract the bees and things so that they get nicely pollinated and then here I've got a row of sunflowers I love sunflowers and this is a um, Monet mix so I'm excited to see how they get on then I have got some aubergines here I grew these from seed I haven't grown aubergines before so I'm gonna to have to see how they get on and here I'm really excited about this this is my little pond that I've got so I've got in here if you have a look I've got an oxygenator and this was quite a small plant 
when I put it in and it's really shot up and then the leaves are red under the water but then when it comes up above the water it goes green so that'd be really pretty I have got an iris here and then this somebody's got a pond on the pot on the plot um, I think their allotment sort of over that way it's about yeah it's quite a few down and then up um, but they've got a pond on theirs and so they took out a couple of their plants for me so that I could put them in my pond and this was one of them and it's just got the roots and I've just sort of tucked it behind this plot behind this pot sorry so they go down and they're in the water just down there and then they gave me this one as well it's looking a bit sorry for itself at the moment it's got sort of nice arrow shaped leaves but I'm hoping that it sort of bounces back then I've got some watercress and you can eat this so this is an edible plant in my pond and this has really come along can you see the roots it's sort of it was quite small when I got it it was all contained within this pot and it's really shot out then here I've got my bulrush and it's got a very very mini looking um, flower spike here but hopefully once it gets settled and established they'll sort of get bigger so that's in there then I have got a lily here and I did have it up on bricks because if you put lilies right down to the bottom when you first buy them they can actually die because they they just don't have the energy to send their leaves up to the top so what I did with it was I raised it up on some bricks and then as the leaves came to the surface so once I got a couple on the surface I then sort of gradually dropped it down until it was on the bottom and now because it's got a couple that are already up on the top it's got enough energy to send the new ones up so they're coming up it is a little bit sort of greeny coloured I think it's it's not ideal having it in a full sun position but that's what I've got so hopefully once all these plants get established and take a lot of the nitrates out of the water I won't get so much algae and it won't be discoloured so I will maybe do a couple of water changes sort of further along through the season just to make it a bit clearer it's also really nice and warm actually I think from all the warm weather we've had then here I've got a little area of some perennials that are planted up so that I can have a nice permanent bed so the wildlife can hide in there and they can then hopefully use my little ramp that I've built here for them so they can come in and out of the pond and then I, I hope that I'll get some frogs, some newts and things like that. The lady who gave me these plants from her pond said she's got newts in hers and that's on the plot so hopefully I'll get a couple. And then here I have got some chilli peppers. These are very mini. I grew these from seed this year. And then further up I have got some bell peppers. These are the sort of the, the small lunchbox snack ones. So hopefully they'll be able to ripen and we'll have a nice warm summer. And then moving on, this is my flower bed that I'm really pleased with. And so these just starting to flower these ones these are nice sort of filler plants that you can put in your flower arrangements very very pretty white flowers and nice and sort of frothy quite whimsical looking and then I have got my amaranthus and this is a variety called green cascade these are really sort of bushing out they're looking quite quite chunky already I pinched these out I pinched it I think where was the I can't see where I pinched it. It's sort of recovered so well. Um, but I pinched these these out and they sent up lots of side shoots. And so they've got nice and bushy so that you don't get one massive long tree trunk stem. You get lots of nice ones that then you can use in your flower engine. And then here I have got some Panicum Frosted Explosion. Now this one is a sort of a grass that sends up a big flower head at the top and it's really nice and bushy and so you're then able to sort of it looks a bit like a firework they're really pretty I'll show you videos throughout the season so you can see what those look like and then here I've got another row of calendula now the reason I've got that here I wouldn't have ordinarily put another row in because I've got plenty of them but sometimes we get tractors that come along here that deliver things and when all the um, people who mow, mow the uh, 
big main path for the plot they come along and sometimes they come into the edge of your plot so here I didn't want to grow a crop that I'd be upset if it got damaged so that's why I put those in there and then just here I have got a row of sweet peas normally by this time of the year I've got a my sweet peas sort of up here they're doing spectacularly and they're in flower but I had a bit of a disaster this year with my sweet peas what happened was the pigeons came and they ate all of my sweet peas so I had a massive tray of them and they ate them but what I decided to do was just leave the stumps in the pots and they actually grew back and so these are from the original plants and they've grown back I'm not expecting a spectacular harvest this year because of the fact that the pigeons ate them but hopefully I will get some nice flowers and I've got two different colours here so what I need to do I go along I pinch out the tendrils just so that they don't damage the flowers as they come along because what the tendrils will do is you get your tendril and it will think to itself oh I'm gonna grab hold of that it will grab hold of your flower spike and then it will pull it and then you won't get nice straight stems you'll get very bent sort of distorted stems and so that's why it's important to pull off the tendrils and then what you do is you just tie them in so I tie them in every couple of inches so I would tie this one in here and then you just do that all the way up the bamboo canes so I've got this nice sort of structure here that I've built I hope you like that tour of my allotment plot as you can see things are really getting going now I've got most things planted out I am starting now to actually start sowing some plants that are going to get me through the winter months so I'm putting in things like my turnips my swede plants like that I've started sowing and then as spaces open up in the plot I'll then plant those out I'm probably most excited this year to see how my flowers get on for my cut flower arrangements I'm growing Quite a few new varieties for me this year and it'll be really interesting to see how they do so I will post videos throughout the year so that I can keep you updated on what I'm doing and how things are getting on if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe also I post um, pictures on my Instagram account and if you'd like to have a look and see those check that out that's Andrew's kitchen garden all right then take care stay safe and I will see you on the next one Bye.